in the West some 200 years ago, but it's no longer the case. And then the other possibility was that there's an infinite past ch chain of events and the universe goes on forever. But that would be um, uh, um, unacceptable as well, because if there's an infinite past chain of events, we would not be in the present. But don't you think, though, the beauty of it is that so we don't know. We just don't know. And I like that. I like that. You like that, do you? I like that. We don't, yeah. We don't know because it, it could be any of those four things. You can put anybody to put their own sort of spin on it. Yeah. But no, I'm not. You're not, by, you're not bought by it? I'm not, bought, I'm not really bought by any of it. I kind of just accept that we're here. Yeah, that's fine. But like I said, I mean, it, like Sherlock Holmes once said, didn't he? I'm just paraphrasing that whatever is left over in the case is a possibility. If you eliminate the um, other possibilities, whatever is left over must be the truth. So what we go through, we go through slowly by logically applying our mind. If the universe came to existence by itself, it's akin to saying that a mother has given birth to herself. It, it's, it's logically, it doesn't make any sense. But it's also, to a lot of people, logically unrealistic that there's a higher being that's created us. So this is what we're going through, the process of elimination. We're looking at the, as far as we can use as our human intellect, there's only those four possibilities. That the universe always existed, the universe came into existence, the, um, there was something which created it, some entity out there must have initiated it, or it's always existed. So I gave the analogy that yeah, something, yeah, you know, or it created itself. And it makes no sense that a universe which would be, it's relatively speaking, inanimate, can create itself. So when you said it could be something other than God, well, whatever that entity is, it's, it's something which is supernatural. Whatever did occur when the Big Bang happened, you've studied a bit of Big Bang, I'm sure, um, at school, 13.8 billion years ago, it came from a singular source, which is incomprehensible. However, what we can say for sure, it came from something, something initiated it. And that thing is what we would then say is a crater makes perfect sense you see yes. and that creator would be then akin to being a a god in essence god, yeah god. because like something a god like Paul. correct yes something which is like beyond the universe because we need a set of explanations so something has to be independent of these um, dependent things is referred to as a contingency argument that everything is contingent upon something else and everything which is in a particular set of things it could have existed in another possible way the fact it does uh, exist in one way it has to if there is another being where did he come from this is what i'm trying to explain to you if if if, if then we calculate this per ad infinitum it goes on forever yeah. then we would not come into the present think about that carefully i love so a lot of people just, just jump in the gun if it goes on forever we would yeah. not be in the present because because conceptually we cannot traverse infinity meaning to say that we cannot add or delete from infinity so the universe came into existence and then you're asking who created that and created that then we would never come into the present because there had to be a starting point much like the, like the dominoes effect so you, you, you knock the dominoes and they all start rolling you can't then spe um, specifically say that what came before that because the, the, we would go on forever and we would not be then in the present does that make sense? Kind of. Yeah. So let me try. There needs to be a beginning though, somewhere. Yes, precisely. That's the whole there objective. Needs to be a beginning. So what we say, I mean, there's like two type of arguments. One is known as the first cause argument that everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore it had a cause. So some people refer to that as a god, but it's got some weakness in the argument. But the contingent argument is very strong, which doesn't seem to have any holes in it in the sense that everything is contingent upon something else, which is dependent upon something else, upon something else. But whatever is dependent, it's, if it's in a particular set of things, something outside of that set has to be independent and a necessary being in order for those contingent things, and that's a bit of a mouthful that I'm saying, but, um, it's, it, um, but it's a contingent set of things that has to be contingent upon something else. And if it's, if it's all within that set, the fact that it could have existed in another possibility, meaning it couldn't have existed, the fact that it does exist, therefore puts it within that dependent set of contingent things, but something outside of that set, an independent thing, has had to cause that dependent thing. So the universe is cons commonly understood to be construed as coming as having parts to it and it's come into okay. yeah so something outside of that so for example the laws of physics then determine th those elements which come forth or the parts which come forth but something outside of the realm has to then um, has to then initiate it you see and hence that must be the, an independent necessary being because then as you are asked the question then who created that and that will like I said go on forever and we would like we've explained not come into the present yeah. So you believe that your person created 
our, yeah, we don't say person, we don't give that particular singular um, uh, point, but yes, I mean, in essence, a being, a supreme being, which would be referred to as God. So, Mus Muslims, we believe that there's only one God, one supreme being, similar to the Christian belief and to the Jewish belief. However, we believe that um, where Christianity seems to have gone a, a, a little bit awry is in the sense of um, associating partners with God in terms of making Jesus God, for example, um, which lots of Christians, unfortunately, seem to believe. So what we say is God is unlike his creation. So he's not a man, he's not a woman, he's not an idol, he's not a statue, he's not that tree. He's totally beyond, his, beyond the creation. And that makes sense because if the universe came into existence and everything went forth, so as we speak now, there's time, matter, space, energy. If I put my hand out to you, we've got space over here. That was all the creation as a result of the Big Bang. So what happened in that metaphysical, what realm that is, that is where we cannot comprehend. But what we do know, it was, it was something that came into existence. And hence it makes sense that this creator has to be beyond the universe and hence unlike anything within the universe. So therefore we, we then say that that is a one supreme being who's created us all. And it makes no sense whatsoever if he's created us purposelessly for no reason whatsoever and simply says, well, I've created you, this is your test in life, I'll judge you in a few thousand years, I won't send you any revelation or guidance upon how to lead your, your life. That wouldn't make sense in the, in the eventuality that there is a creator. It makes perfect plausible sense that he's created us for a purpose and he will judge us according to our actions on this earth. And hence, he sends us guidance upon how we live one's life. So for example, this first mobile phone ever made 40 years ago, well before our young friend's time over here, we never knew as to what this device could possibly do, but we can speak from one end of the world to the other in a click, 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 click of a couple of buttons. Now, if I was to hand that over to you, what, was the what is the first thing you would ask on how to operate this machine? You would ask for instructions or a manual or a guide on how to do so. so yeah, sorry, I should have asked you. I don't want to test your mum out. Okay, so basically speaking, yeah, I should be asking you, sorry. So, it is instructions. Does that make sense? So we believe, hence, God sends instructions in the form of revelation to understand who he is. Okay. What, uh, what we, why are we as human beings, we're only on this earth. What is different between you and me? I think we are the same. Yes, of course we're the same. We're all human beings, flesh and bones. We know we breathe, we eat. I don't, I don't consider myself to be a bad person. Um, I don't feel like I need to follow rules because I already do. Excellent, yeah. You know I mean? no, absolutely. But see, rules are pretty much what we believe is rules are defined by a creator because rules can be ob um, subjectively changed through history. So whatever you may hold on to as a common moral value, that could be um, you know, transcended as time uh, uh, continues. Like, for example, in this country, going back about, just say, 50 years ago, homosexuality was illegal and was very much frowned upon. Today, it's the norm. In another 50 years, it's going to be the norm. I can tell you this for sure. We won't be here probably. Hopefully, our young friend will be. Yeah, you'll be here. Uh, so, 50 years time. So, um, what we say is that incest will become legal. That what that may appear very, uh, that be, that appears very abhorrent, but that's a, it's a leap. But this is the same leap has happened in regards to LGBTQ as well. But because don't you think there's also now the LGBTQ. There was a very strong surge towards. And now there's been a swift turn around to coming back. I think I've seen. Coming back as in which sense? People now, so it's all about the trans and all that. Oh, yes, yeah. And now there's a lot of it going, oh no, we don't want it. Yeah, so. Coming back round, so. So what, but what we basically it is. Yeah, it changed, but what we're saying though is that an objective morality can only be done by a creator who knows what's better for us, and he then sets about in motion what is defined as objective morality or how we should lead our life according to a code of conduct. Because like you, I mean, uh, because the argument that an incestual couple will make, which is exactly the same argument that LGBTQ, same sex inclined people will make, that if we're not harming anyone and we're doing anything for our own volition, what's your, what is it with your issue? What, it's no one's business. Same thing a brother and sister can argue once they've reached the age of um, uh, puberty or once they've reached the age of um, uh, certain consent. Uh, uh, consent 18. They're not harming anyone. Well, they're not, so long as they don't have children. Children, yes. So what? Okay. I mean, even those studies can be somewhat vague in terms of offspring of um, close, really related family members. That the, often the offspring are deemed somewhat, um, uh, you know, you don't get healthy offspring. No, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't encourage, or that wouldn't, I don't think that would be as easily accepted as um, gay people. Well, I, mean, I, don't, 
But within the gay community, there's a much more higher um, sexually transmitted diseases within the LGBTQ community as well, as compared to the heterosexuals. Many more sexually transmitted diseases, and as a result of where, where, where of AIDS and so forth, it's much higher within the LGBT, although they're still in a relative minority. They are really a minority. Still. Yeah, still. But what I would say to you, hasten to that then, is that, like I said, the, the, the examples are the same, but as we, you know, look somewhat, um, you know, contemptuously on, on incestual relations, but the argument is exactly the same. So what is then stopping, or what is it the role of society to stop an incestual relationship? If just say, for example, there is an issue in regards to offspring, then they can agree just to use contraceptives or, you know, do whatever it is so, so that another life cannot be affected. Then what's wrong with that then, in, in effect? Well, in effect, nothing. Nothing, you see, there I you go. I don't have an argument for that because as long as they're not hurting anybody. You see, now where, where is our society is going? What about, well, we don't want to say in front of a young man, what about necrophilia uh, or bestiality? Yes. If two, if a, again. If you see those sorts of things, I don't think there will ever be. You're not going to get people going on rallies going, oh yeah, this is great, this is what we're wanting to be. This is, you know, everybody should be doing this. Well, um, not... again, just say a deceased person gives consent post his death that his partner or whatever can do. Did you know in Mexico, they have now legalized sex in public? They have not. Straight up, Mexico. First country in the world to do that. It just, I think, it happened about six, to, six months to one year ago. We will not be going there on holiday. Uh, there you go. <laughs> hope, hopefully not. Okay, excellent. So what we're trying to say is God then defines what objective morality is. So when, when is he going to start stepping in and going, oh, hang on, folks, this is taking it a step Yeah, he gives it a bit of time. If you notice, like, from the Old Testament, what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah as well. These types of stories are analogous. What usually happens is that societies, when they transgress all bounds, then some sort of wrath comes. That is historically been shown, you see. And, um, uh, you know, we, we do see that. But, so, but to say, I mean, commonly people object to God, not so for the reasons that we've discussed, but more so issues regarding problem of evil or suffering and, and these types of things, which is easily explained in the sense that we're only on this earth temporarily and each and every one of us are given a unique and distinct test. Some could be tested much more vigorously than others. However, your test can be one of um, consistency in whatever society that you, be, uh, that you may live in and to um, appeal and to adhere to God's law within that society. Whereas other people may find it you know, a bit more difficult to make a day-to-day -day living where they're on the, you know, on, on, on the starvation line, as an example. So their test will be somewhat different. And then according to that, as we're only on this earth temporarily, then we will be judged for our actions in the hereafter. We only have one life. So when you, what do you think is going to happen when you die? So we are, we are as a Muslim, and people of, you know, all, reasonably speaking, all faiths, there, there is a concept of a hereafter, particularly in Christianity and Islam, and that God will judge us for our actions on this earth. What we got up to, what did we do? Did we recognize our Creator as well? It's going to be fundamental questions, particularly when the message is made clear cut to you. Like throughout the history of this country, they've nominally understood that Jesus is a divine being, for example. But when you, excuse me, when you examine the New Testament in itself, it doesn't make that claim. It's, a, it's the most amazing piece of literature which is out there and uh, yet throughout history people have got misconce miscon misconceptions about who Jesus was. So we see him as a great and mighty prophet, a great and mighty messenger and indeed that's what he claimed in the Bible as well, to being as such a prophet and a messenger. He didn't walk around the streets of Galilee exclaiming, I'm God guys, here I am, worship me. So in Islam that's a very strong concept that once we've given you the message of as to who God is and what God is not and it's incumbent upon us then to recognize that because it resonates within our innate inner disposition. Yes. The fact that you're even listening, I mean, of course, you're going to be busy, you've got things I'm to do. To Lego. You're, you're yeah. going to, oh, brilliant, okay, fantastic. You're so going to interesting. It's interesting, it's interesting. It's fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Really, really I don't want to further you because I'm sure you're keen to go. Can I offer you a little gift before you go? A free copy of the Quran in English. I'm sure you'll be going to be use, use that. Fantastic. We haven't, didn't give the poor boy a chance to speak, did we? Uh, <laughs> Can I have a Quran, please?